What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangeli here with part two of the beginner series, Starter Teams. Now, there are about four starter teams by my estimation, uh, and we're going to discuss each one, whether they're good for you or whether you're a spender, free to play. You know how it's going to go. All right. So we're going to start with the defenders. Defenders are the quintessential starter team. Basically, you even get two characters free, Luke Cage and Punisher, you get when you start the game. Are they a good team? Yes, in the early game, the defenders represent a lot of value and the lessons of synergy so you could figure out how characters work together without just having a tag. You know, you could see like, oh, people like that do this work well together to do this. It's a very good training wheels team. Uh, there's a lot of content they'll be able to do, probably up to U6 uh, difficulty raid, uh, and you'll find out more as that goes on. They'll be able to do reasonably well in arena early on, but ultimately they are a training wheels team. Their job is to teach you how to play, not to carry you through the game. There are no starter teams in the game that will carry you to the end game. Let me repeat that. There are no starter teams in the game that will carry you to the end game. I need you to know that because people will lie to you or deceive you into thinking you can work on one team all the way up. You can't. They don't work. Every team that's good at the beginning of the game loses incredible value in the mid to late game. Sometimes you can find a node that they're really good at. Sometimes you can find a specific campaign that they're really good at for, of course, one to three fights. But ultimately, the teams that you use at the beginning of the game will be discarded. None of them should be brought over 150,000 points or between 25 and 35k each character. What does that mean? You'll see as we get into more details about how to invest in characters, stars, gear, blah, 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 whatever. But these are the teams. So starting with the defenders, they are a great free to play team because you're given half the team almost to begin with. You have a, a lot of spread of different types of abilities, skill, bio, mystic. You should be able to build out this team uh, and they should be able to accomplish a lot of tasks while you work towards a better teams in the future and building your roster wide as a pay to play player just avoid them like the plague you will accidentally unlock them as you're doing stuff with better teams that you have spent money on uh, and then you can use them as a blitz team or an additional war team if need be uh, if you're willing to spend any money there are teams you can get that are relatively cheap to start the game with that are significantly better than this team and they really don't do anything for you even in the end game, the stuff that you do need them for requires so much of a gear and time investment, it's going to hurt you in the long run. So, Defenders, number one. Number two, though, this is a team that you're going to hear a lot about. Number two is AIM. AIM is a great early game team uh, that has the same amount of usability at the end game. You know, in the mid game, there's a couple of nodes that they can help you with. There's a couple of raid specific stuff that come around once in a while that aim will be good at there's a bunch of decent stuff you can use this team for they're okay in war just like that in the beginning of arena they're pretty good they they can hold themselves up but as a free-to-play player you are spending very important resources on unlocking this team the aim team is built around these two characters scientist supreme and graviton the other three characters tend to be Assaulter, security, and then either researcher for sustain and raids or monstrosity for damage in war or blitz. No need to go into details on that now. I have videos on these teams somewhere else. The entire point of this team is they are very good at carrying you in the early game. That said, like the other one, after about 150,000 points or 25 to 35k each character, they start to fall off. They just don't have the required power output that some of the other teams that are roughly the same, you know, later in the game, just automatically come with. They get power crept out. Sure, there are things you're going to be able to use aim for, just like there are things you would be able to use the defenders or anybody, but they no longer become the best option. So if you are to start with aim as a free-to-play player, I say avoid it. I say wait until the game itself gives you aim through random orbs you accrue or anything like that before you start worrying about them it should be plenty you should within three months of play you should have a full complete aim team anyway and you really don't want to waste the, the gear resources on them or the the credits for the stores these guys are not easy to come by 
as a pay-to-play -play player, this might be one of the better starter teams to buy. It's relatively cheap. I think it's $20. You get a full team plus of decent three-star characters. You can use them without worrying about spending the resources you would. Uh, and then you can use those resources a little bit more intelligently. Again, you're not taking this team far. Stop them at 150. You should be okay. The next team on the list is apparently controversial. I don't know how. Like, I've proven many times this team is a very reliable starter team, but we'll talk about them. The next team on the list is the Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, the Guardians of the Galaxy, um, again, just like the other ones, they don't really show and shine in the late game. There are two things, late game nodes and a couple of late game raids, where you can utilize these characters, just like the other two. The major difference is this team really shines in the early game. Rocket, Mantis, Drax, Gru, and Star-Lord will really do huge amounts of damage and, and value for you earlier in the game than they will later. So this comes down to you. Would you rather work towards unlocking Star-Lord within three months of the game and get value in that period, or would you rather skip him and then eventually unlock a character that doesn't really do much for you anyway? That's completely up to you. As a free-to-play player, I think this team holds a little bit more water, mainly because it's basically a cosmic team, relatively easy to access most of the characters for, uh, relatively easy to unlock Star-Lord as a free-to-play player, I've proven that in my last Defenseless series, and ultimately, no major issues with how this team performs in the early game, you still have to progress to the late game. As a spender, uh, this, is, this is the kind of team you unlock if you are looking to completionist. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily buy any offer for this team on day one, even though it's not a bad deal, uh, but they're relatively easy to farm, and unless you're trying to accelerate to something else, I think you can do a little bit better than starting with this team, because ultimately this team needs the legendary character Star-Lord. He only comes around once every three months for now. If he ever became easier to access, that might be a slightly different conversation, but not really. These characters are kind of necessary. So as a pay-to-pay -pay player, okay. As a free-to-play, definitely a little bit stronger because it helps you build out a little bit of a wider roster and accomplish some tasks that otherwise you couldn't and does reasonably well in Arena compared to where other people would be at the time. But ultimately... That's the Guardians. You may notice that Gamora right here, uh, I'm not including her in this conversation, I'm kind of covering her, because unless you accidentally pull a ton of Gamora shards from like a lucky Mega Orb, unlucky Mega Orb, you're not gonna get much value. The last team, starter team, you're gonna hear a lot about, and I technically agree, the last team is the Wave 1 Avengers. Now, now the Wave 1 Avengers, basically you're gonna start the game and get two of them for free. Hulk is going to be accrued over time through achievements. Iron Man is a three-star legendary, pseudo-legendary unlock requiring shield characters, and all of these characters kind of splinter off in the late game, making this one of the more versatile teams to start with. Uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye have independent synergies. Thor moves to Asgardians and is really the major damage dealer of the team. Cap and Hulk kind of stay forever on the Avengers, but they are self-contained damage dealers, and Iron Man moves to the Power Armor team. With the addition of ISO 8, a game mode we haven't gone into yet, uh, you can kind of build this team out to be a little bit more sustainy. You can end up replacing a character like Hulk or Hawkeye or Iron Man with a dedicated healer and get a lot of value out of this team. This team is very good in the early game. It's Of all of the teams, it has the most value in the late game because, like I said, all of the teams can do like one or two nodes and one or two raid stuff, no big deal. This team ends up being a relatively reasonable war team in the late game. One that, you know, people can kind of have to respect or you can use to beat important teams. So this team holds the most value compared to all of them. That said, we aren't aware of how their farmability is going to work in the future. We know that currently things have kind of gotten mishmash because of a Doom campaign event that's happened or Doom's influence. So this could be different. Uh, but ultimately, I think that if you start with this team as a free-to-play player, again, you get about two characters relatively cheap or free, uh, and then the rest of them are easily accessible. You'll kind of get a bunch of them. You can put together a reasonable team. It just takes a little bit longer than some of the others. No big deal. 
this is a team that can go over 150k but again i really don't advise it there are teams that are just better than this team in the game that you shouldn't worry about basically whenever you take a team to 150k from the starter pool just look to see if there's a team you should be working on or, or working towards accessing now before you worry about it when you know there's very different approaches to how to build some people build teams all at once some people build individual characters and build around it find out which type of player you are and make that decision but wave one avengers is probably one of the better starting teams in the game uh for pay to play or for spender because if you are able to spend money on this type of team or some team that that accelerates them this team really does rely on on resources and gear and stars etc so the stronger they are at that the more likely you are to see value out of them but that said it is probably the worst arena team or the easiest to play around arena team as there are just independent characters that absolutely crush this team where it's not so much the same as other teams so hopefully that was information was helpful there was one last thing i wanted to say before we finish this video and that was a talk about another option people mentioned that i want people to avoid and that is the sinister six now the sinister six is a phenomenal end game team it's actually a pretty reasonable early team as well and it unlocks two different legendary characters shuri and invisible woman the problem is they have absolutely no sustain they have absolutely no major synergy in the early game you can't unlock doc ock for like six months minimum before you enter the game and that's if you're spending money and a lot of these characters don't really do anything outside of their team to begin with they don't really make a difference so if you are going to start the game and you want to unlock the sinister six to be able to unlock two legendaries which is a good deal please understand the legendaries you get are a healer and a kind of tank they aren't going to improve what you can do they're going to improve survivability they are great legendary characters but they don't make your early game roster significantly stronger most of the time as you get shuri or invisible woman early you don't do much with them this team is absolutely fine for pay to play players to uh, buy the pack of or work towards because again if you're willing to spend money you're willing to pay to make up for not necessarily mistakes but changes in the path you want to take as a free to play player this team is a relevant team but it's definitely not a starter team most of the time with a free to play player you probably want to work with the characters you're given for free that said after you finished whatever you're currently working on in store one two or three or whatever your node farming I would recommend building this up as maybe the second or third team just so you can start bridging the gap between your legendaries that you need to build to build a wider roster to succeed that's pretty much it guys comment below let me know which team you think you started with or which team you did start with if you you know a recurring player um that's pretty much it have a good night have a great day i've been tony scongeli and i will catch you later